This movie is great. Like, this movie was just a random recommendation off Reddit, and I'm so glad I chucked it on the list before Spooktober. This might be the most hidden gem of Spooktober this year, because, like, I just checked it out on IMDb. There's, like, three reviews for this movie. and That, and it's on Tubi, which means you can watch it for free. No sign-up, no nothing. That's why I fucking love Tubi. Um... So, if you want to be an insufferable movie hipster like I do, and uh, this movie could be the next big weapon you arm yourself with to wallop your friend's ears about. Um, this movie is more psychological thriller than horror, but it is dark as fuck. Like, this movie is dark as all hell. It is, it is pitch black. It deals with themes of pedophilia, social abuse, manipulation of people with a disability... White saviour syndrome, religious fanaticism, like it's all covered in about 80 minutes. While this movie is not a, a debut for any of the actors or the directors or writers, I think most people will find them as unknowns. I didn't know anything any of them had been in. Um, but that plays into the story beautifully because it feels real. This is a realistic movie and this movie feels real because it's not like Brad Pitt or anything. You know what I mean? You know sometimes if someone gets too big, you're like, you're really good as an actor, but I know I still know you're Brad Pitt. You don't get that with this movie. It's very realistic and you don't know the actor, so it's sort of, it's sort of perfect for the story. Sheep's Clothing came out this year. It follows Principal Mansa, who, due to an act of violence is left with a traumatic brain injury. A few months after the attack, Mance has sort of found a community that has accepted him in his vulnerable state. It's a, it's a recently started church in Palmdale, California. The pastor has taken quite a liking to Mansa, um, often referring to him as like my brother and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of cringy, but intentionally. When something bad happens, the pastor requires Mance's help to deal with it, and therein starts a journey of emotional and social manipulation that it had, I had a knot in my stomach watching some of it. Like, it is just, it's, it's a tough, this is a tough watch. This movie is a bit of a tough watch. The violence is based in realism, and it's often opportunistic, and the whole situation is frankly fucked. The, this movie's a little bit, a little bit like Ozark in the terms of someone does something shady, they try like hell to get them out, get themselves out of it, but they just keep digging. You know what I mean? Like at some point when you're watching Jason Bateman and Ozark, you're like, "Fuck, man, just stop it, stop trying to get yourself out." You just keep getting yourself in more and more shit. This movie is a bit like that. This is also entirely a two-man show. Aaron Pfeiffer as Mansa was so goddamn believable as someone who had been taken in by a charlatan while in a vulnerable state. He's constantly looking confused. He he is often upset about how he is treated. Like he's by no means completely oblivious to what is going on. He knows he's being used as a tool by people. But because he's desperate for community and he, he doesn't he's in a vulnerable state, he is willing to do more than the average parishioner. And that works wonderfully into the story. Nick Hyman is the pastor. He is my NVP. I knew he'd done a good job because about halfway through, I was like, someone should check this actor's fucking basement. Like, he's so slimy and gross in this. It's it's really good. Like, that's how you know they've done a good job. He has... The character knows the exact right amount of character, like, positive reinforcement to give Manza to get him to do something. But he's also barely fucking holding it together, right? You, you can see his inner darkness and he is like wrestling with that shit the entire time. You see it multiple, in multiple scenes, he sort of like fucking flips out and then he's like, hey bud, sorry, I'm just a bit stressed, you know. I'm, I'm, we're still buds, we're still good, you know. It's, it's wonderfully, disgustingly good. I also really like where the movie ended up. This movie ended almost exactly where I wanted it to, and in some movies I find that a drag because it's predictable. Not in this one. Here I just found it satisfying and honestly pretty fucking bleak. If you have ever watched Con Man or serial killer documentaries and gone like, how how do these people get away with this? How are they not found out? This is how, right? 
This is a realistic look at how often people who are really good social manipulators find people who are emotionally vulnerable or socially vulnerable even. Um, and that that the overlap of that Venn diagram is often where bad shit happens. This movie does that really well. I used to work with kids in child safety um, and in the National Disability Insurance Scheme in Australia. And it was horrific how many of them, like lots of them had traumatic brain injuries. And it was horrific how many of them had been used by a family member or a friend under the guise of friendship to do some really fucked up shit. Like this stuff happens all the time. And this is an amazing portrayal of that really dark sliver of our society. The director, Kyle McConaughey, did a, did a wonderful job with this movie, and the actors all seem to work really well with him. He, they obviously, he directs perfectly. Um, the cinematography is really good. It's a bit grainy, but it feels right. You know what I mean? Like that grainy LA sunshine sort of shit. Lots of desert shots. It's good. It's really good. There wasn't a lot I didn't... There, sorry, there wasn't a lot I disliked about this movie. Um... I guess I would have liked to have seen a bit more development of the other churchgoers just because I wanted to see how far the pastor's tendrils sort of had gotten. Or even there, they, they, there's a character in this called Reggie that alludes to his backstory a little bit. Um, and I would have loved to have known a bit more about that just because I like knowing why they're doing it. Um I can also see some people taking issue with the fact that an able-bodied actor is playing someone with a disability. I understand that completely, but given the start of the film, he's able-bodied, like the character is able-bodied, and then an event happens, and then he's disabled, like he's he's got a disability. I um, I sort of think that fits. Also. Aaron Pfeiffer, he didn't play Mansa over the top or anything. He he was a character I did feel a tremendous amount of empathy for. Um, so I, I felt like it was handled fairly respectfully. Um, all in all, if you love psychological or social thrillers about people with like charming but shaky facades, this is a fucking corker. And you can get it on the ground floor. Floor. Not many people have seen this movie, apparently. Um, you can be the person who was the first in your friend groups to see this. I, you know, I'm often that person. Sometimes it's like, yeah, yeah, that was fucking me. Um, sometimes it's fun to be able to show people a movie. This one's, this one's a fucking corker, and it's free on Tubi. I recommend watching this if you love con man or serial killer documentaries about emotional manipulators. This is a great portrayal of that. If you love the psychological side of horror, not the intensely gory side, it's another good one for that. Although there there are there is gore in this. You off if you often wonder how cults even manage to get off the ground at all, people like this is why. This is how. I don't recommend watching this if you want a straight up scare fest. This isn't scary, although it is tense and it's like it's kind of gross to watch because of how manipulative the one of the like the pastor character is. Um, I also wouldn't recommend watching this if maybe due to some things in your past you have a tumultuous relationship with religion. This does highlight how religion can be used for evil, uh, but I know sometimes that shit can hit too close to home. So be warned going in. If that is an issue for you, you might not like this one. Um, if you like this and want another movie that depicts realistic social and emotional manipulators, I highly recommend the Aussie film Snowtown, or the Snowtown Murders, depending on where you are. Um, be warned, it's one of the darkest fucking movies I've ever seen. It is one of the darkest movies I've ever seen. It's also one of the most realistic. It's based on a true story about serial killer John Bunting, who became a bit of a... He became a bit of a local legend in a rural town of Adelaide because he was dealing with known pedophiles and sex offenders in the area violently. But then he went on to use that reputation to manipulate youths of the area into doing violent acts with him. And it is so fucking rough. It is a rough film. I love it, but it's so fucking rough. The violence... Like, I watched it on a Monday once and I was bummed out for the entire week. It's one of the few movies that has managed to do that to me. It's a roughie. 
The violence is realistic. The story is true and awful. But for me, it is the single greatest realistic depiction of a serial killer on film. Like, it actually made me Google disturbed people I knew growing up to see if they'd been arrested for anything like this. Because I was like, oh yeah, you had that trait. Where are you at? Are you behind bars yet, you psycho? You're like, I did that. Um, I had to make sure. I was like, I wonder if anyone I know, some of them had. Um, It's that on point. You could use it as a litmus test. It's like toxic, lots of toxic stepdad energy in this performance. If you had a tough, if you've got a tough stomach though, and like true crime movies, this should be your next watch. It it made me super suspect of those guys who like film themselves bashing pedophiles and sex offenders up on Insta. I've no love for pedophiles, but I there's something off about that. There's something wrong with people who do that, and this it, this film has made me very suspicious of them. Another great movie that is similar in themes to this one is Rose Glass's Saint Maud. I fucking love this movie. It's a psychological character study of a woman named Maud who has become a devout Roman Catholic after something tragic happens while she's working as a nurse. She basically she finds the church and starts working as a private palliative care nurse. Um, where she gets assigned to a former dancer named Amanda, who is terminally ill. Amanda loves nothing more than sinning. Like, she loves drinking and sex and partying. So Maud takes it upon herself to try and show Amanda the love of God. And it's another story about fanaticism and what happens when someone who is emotionally manipulative and unstable is put in a position of power over a vulnerable member of our society. Um, Morford Clark, as Maud, is fucking magnificent. She scared the shit out of me, and it's not even supposed to be a particularly scary film, I don't think. Um, so if you do see Sheep's Clothing, let me know what you think. It's available for free on Tubi, so it's easy to get your hands on. As always, thanks for watching, and remember, if you do want to keep up with the Spooktober, subscribe and hit the bell. That is the easiest way. And I'll see you tomorrow for another review. Peace. Oh. <laughs>